Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Coming up later in the show, we'll get to your comments and questions. But now, the news. As if to emphasize that it has completely returned to normal, the NAFTA region set an all-time production record last month, Wards reports. Automakers in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada produced 1,029,745 light vehicles. What makes this number notable, besides being a record, is that there are now many fewer assembly plants and line workers, especially in the U.S. Automakers and suppliers achieved this record with lots of overtime, and as we warned in yesterday's show, that can lead to a drop in quality. Nissan's next-generation Titan pickup will get a diesel from Cummins. Nissan says the 5-liter V8 turbo diesel will crank out more than 300 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. Cummins is also developing a version for Nissan's commercial vehicles. When Chrysler decided to go with a Fiat diesel for the new Ram, that left the door open for Nissan to partner with Cummins. And remember, Fred Diaz, who was the head of the Ram brand, recently left to join Nissan, and I'm willing to bet he pushed for this to happen. Ford is using more sustainable materials in its vehicles. The plastic wire harnesses in the 2014 F-150 will be reinforced with rice hulls, which are a byproduct of rice grain. The company chose to use rice hulls because there's an overabundance of them, and it's just as durable as the material it's replacing. Ford says the rice hulls will likely be used in other areas of the vehicle and will migrate to other vehicles as well. Other sustainable materials Ford uses include recycled cotton and soy-based foam for seats in some of its vehicles. So here's the future of full-size luxury sedans that have to meet stringent efficiency, fuel efficiency, and CO2 standards. Mercedes-Benz will introduce a plug-in hybrid version of its S500 sedan at the Frankfurt Show. It's powered by an 80-kilowatt electric motor and a turbocharged V6. It'll hit 60 miles an hour in only five and a half seconds and can even run on full electric power for 30 kilometers. That's a little over 18 miles. It only generates 69 grams of CO2 per kilometer, well below the European target of 95 grams and it consumes only 3 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers, which translates to over 78 miles per gallon. But that's on the European test cycle, which is far easier than the U.S. test, so expect lower numbers when it's sold in the American market. The S500 plug-in goes on sale next year. Meanwhile, Volkswagen's introducing the new Golf R. It cranks out nearly 300 horsepower through its turbocharged gasoline engine. That's up 30 HP from the previous model, but it still gets 18% more fuel efficiency when with the manual transmission, it sprints to 60 miles an hour in 5.1 seconds. That number drops to only 4.9 seconds with the DSG transmission. It also gets a new suspension, exclusive 18-inch wheels, and specially designed bumpers. The new Golf R hits the market later this year. Well, I gotta believe it's just impossible to stump you, our faithful viewers, when it comes to automotive knowledge. We showed you these images of this convertible sports car with sleek rounded body panels and a V8 engine, and a few of you knew what it was, an Apollo 5000 GT. Apollo was a company that started in the early 60s because of one man's desire to build an American answer to European GTs. The bodies were made in Italy, then shipped to California, where the drivetrain was installed. Thank you again for everyone that participated in this, and a special thanks to Fred Kerms for sending in the pictures. Coming up next, we're going to get to your comments and questions, because it's time for You Said It. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. And now it's time for some of your feedback. 
Mike has this to say about all the overtime being used in the American auto industry. 12 hours a day is just plain hard on the workers and the workers' families. It leaves little time for much beyond eating and sleeping and going back to work again. There needs to be some humanity in these decisions. Mike, I agree. You know, but there are some workers out there who sign up for as much overtime as they can get because they love those big paychecks. Chuck Grenchy wants to know, with so many top executives moving around like musical chairs, are there any that stayed through all the ups and downs? I'd like to recognize those that hung in there when the going got rough. Chuck, General Motors and Chrysler are chock full of people who stuck it out, even when their companies were going through bankruptcy. And that loyalty goes up and down the ranks, by the way, not just with the executives. A bunch of you commented on that electronic clutch that Bosch is coming out with that will make it a breeze for anyone to be able to drive a manual transmission. HTG wants to know, is that e-clutch a traditional pressure plate or a Game Boy pedal for your left foot? HTG, the pedal feel is exactly like a traditional clutch. If no one told you it was an e-clutch, you wouldn't know the difference except that every shift would be perfect. Buzzard asks, when you decelerate, is the vehicle slowing like a normal manual or does the vehicle go into a coast mode to save fuel as if it's in neutral? Well, it coasts, as you point out, to save fuel. Studebaker Ranch says, what about compression braking? The system, as shown, wouldn't allow that unless there was a disable feature installed. Studebaker, if you want compression braking, all you have to do is downshift and back off the gas. Then the system knows you want compression braking. Cuddles6938 imagines a world of autonomous cars and he doesn't like what he sees. The day cars drive themselves is the day the thieves make them drive themselves to the chop shop. Just think, while you're asleep, your car starts up and drives itself away. Wonderful world we will live in. Banks can just tell the car to come home when you cannot afford to pay the payments. Well, Cuddles, I guess we'll all just have to disconnect the battery cable every night so our car doesn't go driving off all on its own. Josu wrote in about our recent AutoLine poll where we asked you if Subaru should remain a niche player or try to grow into a big car company. I'm really split on the Subaru issue, he says. On one hand, their cars look totally mainstream. Here in Spain, they are poorly perceived and considered plain ugly. So on this premise and preserving its all-wheel drive, go mainstream. On the other hand, I think that being small and special gives Subaru the opportunity of going up market and steadily get to premium territory. I agree, Jozu, that Subaru could improve its styling and I believe it has a great opportunity to move more upscale. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We really do love getting them. And be sure to tune in to AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night. I'll be out of town, but Peter DeLorenzo will have Bob Boniface on hand. Boniface ran GM's advanced design studio when it did the Chevy Volt, and now he's the exterior design director at Cadillac. If you've got any questions about the upcoming CTS, here's your chance to put it to the man himself. That's Out of Line After Hours, Thursday night, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at AutoLine.tv. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.